I got to be a part of that worship set twice today. Uh, not usually do I find myself here early on Sunday morning. Uh, I typically stay at home in my little study. And, uh, but I got to, because of the internet was not working, Cox is having problems, um, I was here. And so there's just a precious, a sweet presence, just a heart's worship in the Lord. And it's just an honor to worship with uh, other people, you know, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's who we're worshiping. That's why we're here today. Uh, we're not here out of some duty. We're here to show honor and reverence and, and to hear from a king, to hear from our Lord, to hear from our Savior. Um, and so I believe there's perspectives and things that he has to say that often, you know, we don't think his way. How many of you know that's true? There's a way the Bible tells us to um, set your minds. We're gonna, this will be how we wrap up today's message. But he said, talks about how you're to, you and I are to set your mind or set our minds on the things of the Spirit. And don't set our minds on the things of the flesh. Because when we set our, how we set our minds determines our actions or determines our thoughts. And our thoughts determines our, our, our actions. And so we're going to look at that. And, and there's just something about um, just getting the, the, the perspective of heaven. Sometimes, the Bible tells us, actually, it says this, and we'll look at this here in a moment, but just to set up, the Bible says that the, the, the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. So if you don't have that word Zoe and Irene, not, not shalom, but Irene meaning quietness and tranquil and rest, right? And so if your mind, if you're not filled with life, Zoe, which is the God kind of life, where you, you just see a, a, a flow in your life, and you're, you're not filled, your mind is not filled and you're, you're, you're fo- with, with peace and rest, then you don't have what God is saying. Even in the storm. Even, I'm not saying that there's not a storm. I'm saying even in the storm, Jesus slept. And so it's important that we would hear and hold when we come to church and we come to gather and we meet with him, that we come to hear from him and hear what he'd have to say and hear his perspective about what's going on in heaven, and it would change what we're experiencing here on earth. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to actually be wrapping up a series um, of windows of heaven. And and really, this whole series was, was as we've been quoting this, um, uh, will you put back up the offering declaration? I, I, I was, as we were quoting that this morning, it was amazingly, to me, profound how what even what we're talking about is all found in this. Just being super aware of a source greater than self. You know, and we were talking about on week one about how it's not, we're not, I'm not coming here to talk about a principle and do this to get this and create a vending machine God, but, but introduce and have us become more aware of a provider of the windows of heaven that are open to you and me, about how he's given his angels charge over us, about how there's an, a- there's an access. I don't know, is that me? That did beep? I don't know how that works. Um, sometimes they, you know, technology, right? Um, but there's things that got, that got that, I don't know what I was talking about. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna, hold on, one pause, one pause. All right, I'm back, all right. <laughs> I know it's so, it's so crazy for me. I can so just squirrel it, you know? And uh, anyway, and that, now I'm going to back. Discipline of the mind, all right? I, I saw the word eggnog. All right, we're not going to discipline just yet. I'm going to go back. Eggnog, so this, on Black Friday, we didn't go shopping, but we went to Shogun's. And how have you ever been to Shogun's? Okay, and so um, we had brought Ben Schlegel. Where is he at? Where's my, oh, he's back in the back. Okay, and so uh, you know how they fling those shrimps to you to eat? You know, anybody? Come on, give me some nods here, and then we'll get back to the word, all right? Um, but anyway, and so the, the, the chef, uh, he, he was really good with his little tools, you know, and he's like doing this thing. And, and it was like a big, uh, you know, surprise to get to go to Shogun's. And it was like, let's do this for a big, you know, fun deal. My uncle left me money. He came down. And I'm like, well, we're going to spend this on something fun. So we just went and blew it all at Shogun's, right? <laughs> And anyway, and so we're having fun, and, and it's like in the beginning, and the chef, he cracks the eggs like three different ways, you know, and, and it's like, oh, this is cool, the fire and all that stuff. And then he's like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fling a shrimp to you. But instead of the shrimp, he pulls the yolk from the whole yolk, a whole, like you would separate the white from the yolk. And he gets it on the spatula, and he's kind of playing with the yolk, and he's like, hey. And, and we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we point over to, uh, to our our. Ben, ben Schlegel was like, hey, yeah, yeah, Sam will do it. And well, because he pointed to somebody else, we all hot hammered on Ben. 
And, you know, that, he, typically the guy's not going to throw a, a whole yoke. But we went along with it, and Ben was like, no, 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 paper, rock, scissors. So he paper, rock, scissors, Samuel, and Samuel loses, pay, or Samuel wins the paper, rock, scissors, so Ben lo- loses, and he's like, ah. Oh. He's like, okay, okay. And the, the chef is like, really? Okay. So he takes that yoke, and he floats a whole, a whole raw yoke, and, oh, yeah, a whole raw yoke, and hits Ben right in the face. It was so funny. So when you said eggnog, so... Just so you know, when you said that's a gross name, I just thought eggnog, right in the noggin, eggnog. <laughs> anyway, that's what was going on. So there's just a lot going on in here, and I, I, I'll get back to where, to where we were. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's, that's kind of like what goes on um, upstairs sometimes. <laughs> so you can re- re- realize, like, okay, we'll, we'll get back there. I just having to sort through the files a little bit, you know. But that was pretty cool, so eggnog. Um, so that was kind of a new, new term for me uh, on that. But so what this whole series has is, is been really about, about this passage up here, a really a declaration about us becoming more aware of a help, a provider. Not about a principle that we can apply and, and manipulate to get something done, but that we would, we would exercise our trust and our faith, that we would, just like we talked about last week, lift up our eyes to where our help comes from. We become keenly aware of strength outside of these hands. And that it is even God who gives us the power, the strength to get well. We're going to look at that verse here in a little bit. And um, I, I want to start uh, this morning. Um, I want to just read back over this because it's, it's a, it, um, the offering declaration. Because this is, it's amazing to me how, how much of this is exactly what we're teaching. I just was like, wow, that's crazy. This came out of a, a, a drive on a truck, you know. And the Lord's like, I want you to start saying some stuff as a church. Making a declaration. Coming into agreement with me concerning your life not being limited by a job. Not being limited by your own hands. Not being limited by, but having and resourcing heaven. Having and resourcing heaven. And um, so, Father, today we pause, reflect, and say thank you. Just again, just recognizing this is, this is one of the number one keys to stewardship and really to loving the Lord your God with all of your heart is recognizing how much he's given to you and how much he's given to me. Without that first place, that the, the gifts, every good thing in my life really does stem from him. It's not a self-work thing. It's not or something that I acquired for myself. I will not steward my, my life. My, my children, my dollars, I'm talking about everything, that every good gift, it's from him. And so I return that back to him. I return this life back to him for his glory. This life, my life is for his glory. It's what he's given to me. And, and guys, we recognize you as the source of every good gift of our lives. Right now, we come into agreement with you. And so it's, this is huge. This is just all of the word. You, we will draw from what we come under. That's all. You can only draw from what you come under. And so this is why it's so important where we, when we hear the word of God that we would say, I'll take that. Because in, in doing so and moving myself under the word of God, now I can draw from its author. So you, see, when I come under that word, I'm not just limited to that word. I'm limited to the source of that word. And that's so much greater. And that's why when I think of self and a mindset on the flesh, that's self, then I can only draw from its author and that's me. That's a tough place to be. That's a very limited supply. And so we come into agreement with you. We come under. We come in. And I think that this is important for for me. Let's just to find agreement this morning. Agreement doesn't mean, um, uh, okay, well, yeah, I think that way too. So me and God are on the same page in this on this spot. But it really means to come under. We come under what God's saying. We, to come into agreement, it's what God says. It's not like, yeah, I think that way too, so I'll agree with you here. No, no, it's, it's coming under what he says. I'm going to come under what you say. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to say, in this house and in my house, there's provision for your vision. There's, these are promises in the word. Now, let me say this. These are promises that, that, that are, are, are brought about because of something that you applied and I think that sometimes we teach, and I said this in the series, we teach, we teach promises um, or principles, rather, as promises. And we think, and oftentimes we, we, don't, uh, uh, we don't communicate the responsibility on our end. I'm not talking about a vending machine, but there is some buttons you've got to push if you want the Snickers. Hello. 
right? There is something you have to do, okay? And when he talks about my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, that was a contingent, there was a contingency there. And it had to do with them giving generously. And so because God could saw, saw that they would, would yield to and, and, and give of their supply, God would make sure that their supply was full. And so that's that passage. So to come into agreement, you, you can't just quote scriptures and say, well, this is going to work this way and, and, and when you're not even under that word. If you're not living your life in a place, in a way of being generous and in a way of where you recognize and returning and, and give everything that you have as God's, don't quote this verse and expect it to work. All you're doing is dishonoring God's name in the eyes of others because you're, it's like a children of Israel living a certain way and, and the nations are like, well, I thought he was the Lord. Ezekiel, we're going to look at maybe, I don't know if we'll work, look there today, but Ezekiel 36 talks all about that. Ezekiel 36 says, I, I, I'm upset with you, Israel, because of how the nations are dishonoring my name because they say, you're the children of me, and yet you are no longer in the land that I gave you. But I'm going to bring you back to a land, not for your sake, but for my name's sake. God's name matters. God's reputation matters to him. And sometimes we dishonor the reputation of God by us saying we're going to, uh, or, or applying, or, or quoting, or standing on, or trying to use the word of God without coming under it, and therefore putting action and work to it, and then wonder why it's not working, and then saying, look God, what did you do? What you didn't do? Well, God can't do anything. And then God is despised in our eyes. And you can either serve God or you can serve mammon. You'll either love one or hate one or you'll love one and despise the other. And this is where a lot of times where we've gotten to, where we think less of God because we're not underneath of the word of God. We want the promise of God without, the, without us coming under and doing the works of, that God tells us to, to do. And so it's really important that you are saved by grace, right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. By grace, through or, you're saved by grace through faith. But faith is not even a thing if there's not work corresponding action. And here's the cool thing about the corresponding action. That it is God who is at work within you. All the while to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So even, even when his word comes, if you and I would just surrender our will, he would give you the, the desire and the ability to, to produce those works and, and appropriate grace or that which is afforded for our Full salvation, not just heaven. He's given us all things. The Bible says through his exceeding great and precious promises, he's given us all things for us richly to enjoy. For here and now, he's given us, but those are appropriated by faith. So there are things that you and I need to do. And so I don't know, we're teaching all this this morning, but this is, it's, this is what we're teaching on this whole series. And he goes on to say, uh, and in this house, in my house, there's provision for your vision. You want provision for his, for his vision? I'm telling you, there's provision for his vision in your house. In no way, don't you hate that, being limited? In no way will we be limited to serve our generation. And that's what, that's what the, the increase is, is for, is to serve. Because God so loved the world, that what did he do? He, he gave, he served. This is what he tells us. This is what it looks like to, 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 to love manifest is generosity. And this is why coming to church is not enough, but coming and serving is so vital. If you're in this house if you're at a, or a part of a church, if you're online and you're not serving, then you're swerving. You're missing the point. You're not giving of the supply that God put in you. He's given you gifts. He set each one in the body as he sees fit, and he's given you gifts. And the Lord tells us, now use those gifts to serve one another. There's something that happens. There's an outflow. What is there is? There is a flow in your and my life when we choose, that's what it is, we choose to serve or we choose to give. Love is put into work. Love is activated. And we know that faith works by love. But anyway, we're not going to try to put these things together this morning. Let's keep going here. He says, so we purpose to be an extension of your goodness so others would experience you. Isn't that interesting? God left you. God left you for him. Like you are Christ here on this earth. You are the body 
of Christ. You are the experience, the, the world's ex- to experience God through you, through me. So other experience you right now, we ask you for wisdom and to direct our steps into a place of overflow. Our lives will bring increase to your kingdom. Glory to God. So I just found it really interesting that that was almost uh, exactly what um, just the Lord had just bring him back. All right. And so um, we're going to start this morning. The title of this morning's message in the Windows of Heaven series is The Blessing Resourced by Heaven. Resourced by Heaven. Or just The Blessing is what I have it titled. Um, and again, la- last week um, we talked about, you know, lift up your eyes, where your help comes from. And so I want to start this morning in Matthew chapter 6. This has been uh, pretty much our Matthew 6, 18 through, I'd say 23 or 24 has been our text. But I want to start in just verse 21. And it says, for where your treasure is, there is, or there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Now, let's, let's, uh, let's establish this. That it says here that where my treasure is, my heart is there. In other words, I can direct my heart through my treasure. This is, what is, this is what this says. I can direct my heart through my treasure. And, and so uh, if I want to fall in love with my kids more or my wife more, let's spend some money on her. Spend some money on them. Go, go. If you want to fall in love with your kids a little bit more and they like duck hunting, go, then go ahead and spend some money, not just for them to have duck hunting, but for you to have some stuff for duck hunting so you can be there together. You'll find that you'll fall more in love with that. It, whatever it might be, you might say, you know, get some good shoes for shopping. <laughs> right? All right. Landon, just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. My feet hurt too the same way. I don't know what it is. All right. All right. Anyway, so Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Then it goes on in verse 22. It says, the eye is the lamp of the body, and if your eyes are good or singular, um, your whole body will be full of light. The Moffat translation says it like this. If your eye is selfish, uh, your whole body will be filled, full of darkness. Then if then, the eye, or if then the light within you is dark, how great is the light? Verse 24, no one can serve two masters. You either hate one or love the other. He's saying this, that when your eyes are dark, when you don't see generous, all you, when you're going to just see dark. You're going to see less. You're not going to be able to see what God's wanting you to see. But when your eye is filled with light, when your eye is generous, not, not, not generous, but when your eye is generous, there's more. There's more. You can just see that there's more where that came from. There's, there's more. There's a source that's greater than, there's just more. There's light. But when your eye is selfish, when your eye is, then, then it's very limited. I, I don't know about you, but I'm limited. In myself, I'm extremely limited. But when I'm attached and when I have a draw from a source of the Lord, Man, it's like there's just there's a never-ending supply. And that's the whole goal of what we're talking about in teaching is that his body, his people, would not be limited by only what they can produce. But we would learn to draw from the windows of heaven. And so this is what we're, this is what we're talking about. And we went on to talk of verse 24 last week. And it says, no one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. And, and we said this, that so much, so much of the church is not in that place where we hate God and love money. But oftentimes we're in that place where we, 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 we have to serve one and we despise the other. We, in other words, we, we, it says, um, I want to quote this directly. It says, you will be devoted to one. In other words, whatever it tells me to do, because that will provide for me, and God just, he can't. I think we think God can't do a lot of things. Or he won't do a lot of things. When we think about finances, okay? And so let's get, we're just get our, getting our, our mindset shifted from, uh, from self-sufficiency to trust in the Lord. This is what this is all, this whole message is about. It's not about trying to increase, you know, you to say, hey, I want, I'm trying to get more tithes and offerings from you. That's not it. That's zero. My, my, I don't ebb and flow. My, my financial state does not ebb and flow if this church does good or uh, in, you know, the books this year or not. I don't get a, a percentage bonus based on how much we get or how much we don't get. I, I, that's not how my salary is set. So what I'm talking about here, it has nothing to do with let's raise the dollars here. So 
it has everything to do with you and I changing the place of trust, changing the place of strength, so that in this world, God is seen as strong, not because his children are seen as strong, and the world declares that this God is great, this God is good, instead of like in Ezekiel, where he says, well, my name is, 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 is being run through the mud because my children, yeah. the, my people, are not blessed. Yeah. So God wants you to be blessed. Why? To be a blessing. Can I tell you that? We, we quote this, blessed to be a blessing. That is truly the reason for the blessing. The, truly the reason for the blessing is to be a blessing. This is what, when, when the blessing was first introduced to Abraham, God declares to him, all the nations of the world shall be through you. I'm blessing you so you can be a blessing. There's nothing like being a blessing. Have you ever been there where you, you can give abundantly? And sometimes we just got, even when in our poverty, we gave abundantly. There's nothing like Tapping the blessing. There's a source for you and me that's so much greater than these hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so let's look at this. This is the start of the blessing. This is where we look in Genesis chapter 12 when God found Abram or Abraham. And it says this uh, He's Abram at this time. Um, and the Lord said to him, Genesis chapter 12, 1 and 2, the Lord said to Abraham, Go out from the country. Uh, from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And I'm going to make you a great nation. Oh, yeah. Big house, big land, lots of acres. Anybody want some acres? You know, uh, he says, and I will bless you. Woo, yeah, woo, blessing. And, I'll make your gr- and I will make your name great. Yeah. Here's why. So you can be a blessing. And you will be a blessing. And you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So this is the purpose of the blessing was to be a blessing. So this truly is, but that statement that we say, blessed to be a blessing, truly has its roots in the word of God. And so when you and I say that, when we, you and I do that, when we recognize that there's increase that comes to my life, it really truly is to be a blessing, not just to be self-consumed. God's, God's plan for your and my uh, prosperity and multiplication, we talked about this, is in a seed. He always gives everything, and Mark chapter 4 tells us this, if you don't understand this parable, you'll understand nothing. But the, the seed is what, is what God gives you and me for our provision. Seed in word form, you see it seed in finances, but the seed's provision is found when you sow it. So the, the, though God gives your, his provision to you in the form of a seed, the, the, that provision is only released by our will. Will I sow it or will I not? That seed, will I plant that seed? So many times we're just wanting to eat it and consume it, all right? Let's keep going here. So now I want to I go, we're going to look this morning. So we see the blessing was first introduced um, to Abram. Okay, and who became Abraham, and, and God blessed him, and he's going to say, you're going to be a blessing to the, all the nations. All the nations will be blessed through you. But you'll be blessed, and you'll be a blessing. That's, that's a promise to the children of God. Can I tell you, if, if, if you are a child of God, if you've believed on Christ for your salvation, you're blessed, and, and all the nations are to be blessed through you, Wow, that's interesting. We got grafted in. That's what this was. This is grafting in in Christ. Grafted in. That you and I are to be blessed, to be a blessing. This is this transfers to you and me. We're gonna look at this in scripture. But let's look at the power of the blessing. Okay? Let's look at the power of the blessing. Genesis chapter 25, 29 through 34. <clears throat> One day while Jacob, you remember Jacob and Esau? This is the story of Jacob and Esau. And I wanted to read these places because so many times we talk about these stories, but maybe we don't really see the significance of some of the words that are said and some of the things that, that, that how important and how, and, um, how um, pivotal they really are. How pivotal. The release of a blessing. 
the release of a blessing. Can I tell you, the release, uh, your, your and my, when we, when we are aware uh, as a mother and a father of where our help comes from, can I tell you the release of our blessing to our children empowers them to prosper? Not just what I can give them, but what I can declare to them, what I can declare over them. I need to be aware of the power of the blessing that was given to me in Christ by me simply believing on Christ. How did I believe on him? I believed in my heart and I confessed with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. There's something about the blessing, the release of the blessing, and, and me partnering with it through the words of my mouth. But let's look here about the blessing where we first see uh, Isaac transferred the blessing to Jacob, okay? And we, we know that, that we don't see Abraham doing this to Isaac, but we do see God doing it to Abraham, and it's inferred. Again, Genesis is super short. We get the, just the foundation of all, really, of all Christianity and where, you know, the story in just only a few passages. But we see that Isaac is following the pattern that he had received. Abraham had received from the Lord. Abraham had passed it down to Isaac. We don't see that exchange. But then we see here Isaac passing it down to Jacob. And then we see for every time that Israel or Jacob is referred to, they're referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What he's saying is a son, a son, a son, blessed. And all the nations are blessed. Blessed. People will know you. They'll know you who your father. They'll know the blessing. They'll see the blessing upon your life. They'll see the blessing upon your life. And you saw that. When they went into the promised land, what, what, was, what was said was, their God, their God, their God is, is, is prospering. Their God is fighting for them. Their God, right? And that's what God wants for you and me. He wants not just the world to be aware. He wants you and me to be very aware that where my, where my strength and where my help comes from. My God, my God shall supply all my needs. My God, my God has given me more than enough to meet every 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 whatever's going on. My God, my God. People go, man, God's just good to them. God's just good to yes, He is. And 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 and, and God is good to others through you and through me. So Genesis twenty five twenty nine. One day. While Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and was famished. He said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew, for I am famished. First, sell me your birthright, Jacob replied. Look, Esau said, I'm about to die. What good is a birthright to me? Now, if you were to go up in these previous verses, you got Jacob, who's a mama's boy. And you got Esau, who is a hunter, a man's man. Back in that day, there was no cell phones and technology and typing. Okay, you couldn't. You had to have. You had to be a man to be a to, to be a provider. Okay, this, this just go back 60, 80 years, a hundred years, and you'll see a soft man was not what you were looking for. A man of the tent, a mama's boy. And so it says that Isaac actually loved Esau. It tells us that Isaac he loved both of his boys, but Jacob hung out with you know in the tent. He cooked stews and probably sewed and. You know, all that kind of stuff. Not, and again, in, in this day and age, you're thinking I'm talking sexist. No, I'm just talking about what, what it was. Okay? And, and, and so um, Esau was pretty self-sufficient. He could do about anything. You know? Have you ever been in that place where you, you this is why we want to win the lottery. Every person. It's not new. This is been talking about this in, you know, Solomon talked about this in Proverbs, how people want to get rich quick. They want to have a lot because a lot tells them they can do what they want to do. I'm self-sufficient. Well, Esau, hunter-gatherer, strong man, dad loved him. He could, oh, I don't need it. What, 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 it's a birthright. Give me some of that food. I can provide for myself. This is what this is, passage is about. But Jacob said, you're not going to get any, you're not going to get any of this soup unless I get your birthright. Jacob had this understanding. Jacob, who became Israel, had this understanding. I need help. Do you have that understanding? Do I have that understanding? You know, we tell other people, you need help. <laughs> you need some help, bud. Like you're an idiot or something. You need some help. But, but do I say that? I need some help. Even bank accounts, oh, God, I need help. 
Because money can't buy what heaven can provide. I need help. Money can't provide breath in my lungs. Money can't provide peace in my mind. Money can't provide a bright future and an identity in my children. Money can't provide what God can provide. I need help. I need what comes from being a son. I need what comes from being a son of God. I need what comes. I don't just need salvation. Oh, yep, I got to heaven. No, I need the fullness of what God's given me as a son so that I could be a blessing to my children and to, to my neighbors and to my workplace and to this community and, and beyond. Yeah. I need it all. I need help. I need help. Jacob understood that. One of the greatest places, you know, we, 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 maybe you've heard this, in your weakness, his, somebody quote, help me out, in, in weakness, his grace. is made strong. Like, my grace is, is sufficient for where you have need. Like, the, we, when, we, when, we're, when we're, we lack, God is the source. He's the enough. He's the more, the, he's the over enough. Okay? So he says, um, I'm good. I'm about to die. Verse 20 or 32. Look, he said, Esau, I'm about to die. What good is the birthright to me? He swear to me first, Jacob said. So Esau swore to Jacob and sold him the birthright. Then Jacob gave some bread and lentil stew to Esau, who ate and drank, and then got up and went away. Like, uh, whatever. Thus Esau despised or thought very little of his birthright. The birthright was the empowerment to prosper. That's what that was. He despised it. I find it interesting that he uses that same word, you know, that we just were looking at in, in Matthew chapter 6. They despised or thought very little. You either love one or hate one, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. Interesting. He just despised. didn't think that much of it. Let's keep on reading here. Uh, this will go to Genesis chapter 27. Now, this is the exchange of the blessing and, and, and the birthright. Listen to this. Then his father Isaac said to him, come near to me. So this is the story of Jacob, you know, getting killing the lamb. His mom telling him, kill the lamb and getting the sheep and getting his brother's coat and all this kind of stuff. So he felt, felt hairy because Isaac, his eyes were dim. He was blind and couldn't see, but he could smell and he could taste. He wanted to eat a, one last bowl of stew before he dies. And he knows it's the time to transfer the blessing and to, to declare a word to his sons and to declare... It's, it's, it's interesting. Do we recognize the power of our words? Dads, this is, inter this is important. If you're the caretaker of your home, if you're the head of your home, your words to, to empower and declare the blessing over your kid because of where your help comes from, you can declare their help to them. This is what's about to happen here. And so Isaac, um, he, he, he says, go get me that. I want to eat again. So Esau goes. He tells Esau this. He doesn't tell Jacob this. He tells Esau this. So Esau goes to kill and to find a, a, an animal and to kill it. Well, the mom, you know, she hears this as well. So she devises a plan. And Jacob gets this, they go kill this lamb or this, this and, and he brings it in and, and, and gives it to Isaac. And, and Isaac's like, you don't sound, or he says, you don't sound like Esau. And Jacob's like, well, yes, I'm Esau, you know. It's me. Come on, smell of me, you know. He's trying to impersonate. And so it says this, then his father said, uh, then his father Isaac said to him, talking to Jacob, come near me and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him, and Isaac smelled uh, the smell of his garments, and he blessed him and said, see, the smell of my son is the smell of the field and the Lord that the Lord has blessed. So this is awesome. May God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be everyone who blesses you. It sounds a lot like what Abraham probably passed on to Isaac, because that's what he received from the Lord. And we knew that the Abraham was chosen by God because he would command his children after him. As soon as, verse 30, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, when Jacob had scarcely gone out, like just, he just went out, just walked out of the room from the presence of Isaac, his father. Esau came running in from his hunting. 
he also had prepared delicious food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, uh, Father, uh, arise and eat my son, eat of his son's game that, uh, that you might bless me. Here, Dad, Dad, here I've got you what's your favorite, you know. It's a young one too. It's all, it's, 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 I got a spike, you know, good eating. Or I got a fawn, tender, fork tender. All right, just kidding. All right. Probably shouldn't have said that. Um, but dad liked the, he knew what his dad liked, so he brings it in. He prepared delicious food for his father, and he said, Let my father arise and eat of your, your son's game, that you might bless me. But his father, verse 32, says, um, Who are you? He answered. And he said, I'm your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? And I ate it all before you came, and I have blessed him. Yes, he shall be blessed. And as soon as Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out, cried out exceedingly with, great and bitter, with a great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, eat me also. Oh, my father, bless me, he said. Your brother came deceitfully and has taken away your blessing. He's taken it away. He said, you can't, I can't bless you. you he took your blessing. You, just, you didn't think much of it. Now you want it. But you couldn't get it back. It says in the New Testament that, that he couldn't get it back, though he sought after it with tears. It's interesting. Sometimes there's, can I tell you, there's sometimes there are decisions that you just can't get back. I know we don't want to hear that. We know that God is a restorer. Um, some, th- some of those things that we're going to see restored will be on the other side of this dispensation. It matters. Our choices matter. Let me say it this way. What we value and what we serve matters. It matters. Genesis 14, 17 through 20. This is the, you'll see this, that, <clears throat> again, we, we were looking at the blessing um, in Genesis chapter 27. But we, I wanted to go back to, uh, uh, to uh, Abraham. When he won a battle, he recognized this is something that every day that you and I, we can have in our lives. Every day we can be aware of God bringing about victory. I'm looking right now at God's preservation yesterday. You know, that was the Lord. You know, Kylie Kylie got in an accident yesterday. Her her minivan got T-boned on 71 and it was doesn't look good. And there was kids all sitting in the car. And, every, and they got hit on that side. Passenger side, both just smashed the rude. I mean, like, for real. It's not, it's totally, I mean, I wish I would have got, had that picture and put it up here. You'd see that it was God. It was God. Every day, he's God. Like, we could, we could, we could, every time I come together, we see this principle. And why would I come, and I come, and when I, I bring my tithes, and I bring my offering, what I'm bringing, I'm bringing, God, it was you who woke me up this week. It was you who provided for me. It was you. This is why giving, our giving truly is a worship. It's a worship. It's not just the time during the service. Our lives are to be a worship. But when we go out, our lives are to be a giving. Why can I give when the Lord says, give that guy some money at the, you know, at the store and you're reaching your pocket and you thought you had a 20 and it's a 50 why can you do that? Because God gave it to me. Lord, thank you. I can so extravagantly, I can show gen- I can be generous. I can let love flow, and love op- is the windows of heaven. Whenever I yield to love, I'm, 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 I'm yielding to the, its resources, the very resources of God itself in, in, your, in my life. Okay? Let's keep going here. So I wanted to show you here in Genesis 14. And after, after uh, Abram returned, or Abraham returned from the defeat of Chedorlaomer Laomer and the kings who were with him. So he, uh, the king of Sodom went out to meet him uh, at the valley of uh, Sheva. Uh, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the high priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, God by God, most high, possessor of heaven and earth. So he, he rece- he's being blessed by, by, by Melchizedek. And, and here, Abraham, the very next verse, says that he gave him back 
uh, he worshiped him back by giving him tithes of all. So we see this, this Melchizedek as, as being a form or a type of Christ. Just he, he's recognizing his strength, his victory did not come from himself. This is what's going on here. He, Abraham is recognizing that my help came from the Lord. This is what's going on right here. Every time you and I give, here's what we're doing. We are making a transaction with the windows of heaven. We are making a declaration of where we draw from. Where my help comes from. Every time I give, every time I sow, when I, when I pray, this is why we talk about this. One of the most prideful starts to your day is a prayerless one. I don't need help. I'm good. I'll pray when I need help. Really? When do you need help? Because this is why Jacob was chosen. He, rec- he recognized, I need help. I need help. Can I tell you, American proud, American strong, American dream, pride, a prideful America is probably the worst place to be where we can do it on our own. We can just make a little more. If all I have is a little more money, a little more time, I can get what I need. No, you can't. No, we can't. We need help. Tell your neighbor they need help. And then say, I need help. I need help. Malachi chapter 1. Malachi chapter 1, 1 through 5. This is, the, the, if your Bible maybe has headings, again, those are put in there by people that talk about, try to head the chapter or head a portion of it. This, in my Bible, the Berean Study Bible, the, this, the statement above this is God's love for Israel. These five verses, God's love for Israel. It says this, it says, this is the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. So this is the start of the book of Malachi. And this whole burden of the word of the Lord that God sent a prophet to speak on his behalf to his people. So how many of you know a father, the, the Bible tells us that a father that loves you disciplines his children or brings direction and correction, right? And, and so he, Malachi is burdened to the Lord to carry a word that is coming from a father that loves his children. This is what Malachi is written about. It's all about love for the people of God, for his children, children of Israel. It's all about God's love. So he says, I have loved you. Verse 2 says, the Lord, I love you, and I've loved you. And you say, but you ask, how have you loved us? How have you loved us? And you know what he brings up? He brings up the blessing. Isn't that interesting? He said, I chose, I, I have loved you, says the Lord. He said, I love you. You said, how do you even love me? He said, what do you mean, how do I love you? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Like it declares the Lord, yet I love Jacob. Yet I was gracious to you. Yet I've empowered you and been pro- the, all, the, when you needed help, I was your helper. I was your helper all these years. I, this is what he brings up the blessing. Is it? Verse 4. Or no, no, no. Um, uh, verse 3. But Esau. I have hated and I have made his mountains a wasteland and left his inheritance to be uh, the desert jackals. In other words, he, he's saying, I just left my hands off. Do you know, you know the Bible says that a, a son that's not disciplined is hated? That's what he's saying. He's like, I just, I just let him do his thing, go about his own way. He hated him. That's, that's hate. To let your kids just go about their own way, you hate them. That's what the Bible says. To just let them do whatever they want, uh, uh, no restrictions, uh, no boundaries. You hate them. You love you, you hate them. So when he says he hated them, he wasn't trying to uh, do bad things to them. He was just, go ahead, go about your way. Figure it out. You got it. Can I tell you when you get frustrated with your kids, maybe this is just me, fine, just do it. You ever been there? Anybody ever been there? Raise your hand. Somebody help me out. Thank you. You just say, fine, go do it. What you're doing is you're like, I'm done. Washing my hands. I hate you. I hate you. I despise you for despising me. This is what happened. God, Esau despised the Lord. Despised his birthright. Despised this help, despite, I got this. Because of all of his gifts, can I tell you your strength and your gifts, they're a gift? (laughs) 
you might be super smart, and you might have been the valley Victorian, you might be strong, you might be good looking, you might be the athlete. Can I tell you, you did nothing to get that. And yet we walk around like, look what I'm driving. <laughs> what are you driving? Look what I can afford. That's garbage. Are you generous? Because none of that stuff matters, but the Bible says, except for faith expressed through love. And love's work is express love's work is generosity. This is the word. Verse four. Though Edom may say we have uh, we have been devastated, but we will rebuild build the ruins. He's, he, in other words, he's saying, yeah, well, it didn't work out, but I got this. We'll rebuild. Um, we've been crushed, but we'll rebuild the ruins. But this is what the Lord Almighty says: They may build, but I will demolish. This is a pretty stout words of the Lord saying, you, apart from me, you can, yeah, you can build a house on the sand, but a storm will come and it will fall. They will be called, uh, they will be called wicked land of people always under the wrath of the Lord. Next verse. You will see it with your eyes with your own eyes and say, great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel. He's declaring to them, I loved you. This is how I've loved you. You don't know how I've loved you, but you'll see it, and you'll see it again. And all this passage of Malachi is talking about bringing back honor and love to the, to, to, to the Father. All of it. Now let's jump to Malachi chapter 3, 6 through 16. And we could, we could spend just reading the whole thing. It's so good. It's so rich. It's so just, oh, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Okay? Again, I, I, I'm, I'm, this is, it's so interesting how God starts with Abraham. He closes this book here, and then he grafts us in through Christ, all the Gospels, and brings us into Christ. So it, it, it doesn't end. It continues. The blessing continues. And this is what he's talking about. The blessing. You and I drawing from him. I'm not talking about, well, how much is it? 10% off the grocer than this? It's talking about recognizing where your help comes from. It's talking about looking at these kind of places and being aware of this when all you can see is this. I make a decision based on this, not based on what I see here. And I recognize and I lift my eyes where my help comes from. And when I come into a situation, because I've drawn, because I've declared, Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. I, I know. This is what I know. I know I, I have a place to draw from. There has been, for myself, laid up treasures in heaven because of his goodness this is what we're talking about. So he says this, because I, the Lord, verse 6, do not change, you descendants of Jacob. He brings it up again. You descendants of Jacob, you who have the, my blessing, because I don't change. You have my blessing, and I still have given you my blessing, and my word, I'm not taking it back. You descendants of Jacob have not been destroyed. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have turned away from my statutes and you've not kept them. Have that, can that sound like us sometimes? Oh, Lord. He says this. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have turned away from my statutes. You've not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you. Doesn't this sound like revelation? Do again the things you once did. Return to your first love. This is not new. Is it in the, can I say this? It's not old. It's the word of God that was and is and will be. It's not old. It's good. It's good. It's not old. It's good. Is the bread old? It looks. No, it's good. It's good. Can I tell you all of that word? It's good. So he says, return to me. Uh, uh, yeah, he says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. I love how he says that so many times. You'll find that in Malachi, he says, Lord of hosts, I want to open your eyes and I want to open your awareness to heavens. I want to open your awareness to a source greater than you. I want to open your awareness to where does your help come from, the Lord. I want to open your awareness to where he talks about in Hebrews right in the very beginning. Are not angels all sent to, to be ministers to the heirs of salvation? I want to open your eyes. I want to open your mind. I want to open your the way that you think. We're going to talk about that mind here in just a moment. The way that you think. We can't translate it in English because your mind is not just the way you think. It's the way that you think here. Here, but also the way you think here. It's from both places. It's the decisions you make, but it's the, 
also the decisions you make. You take this part of you and this part of you, and you come together, and that's your mind. And so this is what he's saying, like, hey, I, 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 want, I want to bring it to, to your and my direction. Um, I, I don't know where I was. I almost was somewhere, but i got to come back. <laughs> All right, let's keep reading here. So he says this. Um, return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Again, being aware of, of, of just heaven. But you ask, how can we return? Will a man rob God? He, God asked. Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? He says, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the tithes, the full tithe, into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your land and the vine of your field. Will not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of hosts. It's, he's bringing into, he's bringing to the peep his children, his help. Where does my help? I will lift my eye. He's bringing the awareness where his your and my help comes from. And what he's talking to him about bringing tithes and bringing offerings. They were bringing tithes. They were bringing offering. They were bringing the sick and the less. And this is where every, every time I bring a gift, I'm, I'm declaring something and I'm setting my heart. Can I tell you how you and I give matters? How we give, what our heart is saying when we give. Uh, can I tell you, I've been in the place like, ah, I could do this. And I got this going on right now. And dadgum it, well, I'm the pastor here. I better make sure. I mean, somebody's counting my tithe. Can I tell you that's happened before when I got a hundred things going on? And do I have to really give this percent? Like I know I'm giving this. That's that's what he said. I mean, I, I don't that's a self-imposed standard. I could just can we just lower it this time? Can I just give only here and not there and not there? Because like let's just let's just back off on some giving a little bit. When I do that. What I'm saying is, ah, oh, well, here's Lord, here's the half broken down one. I need this one for this. They were bringing it. Again, I'm not talking about anything other than you and I having the opportunity to declare, to declare where my help comes from and to lay up for ourselves, set our heart, Matthew 6. And to lay up for ourselves a place to draw from. Oh, I'm drawn from heaven. I'm drawn from heaven. What I got is not enough here. I'm drawn from heaven. Father, thank you that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Father, today as I sow, as I give. A widow gave her all, all, with all of her might. And she gave it might. But she gave with all of, she gave a small, but she gave her all. And God saw that. What that just tells me is that God's watching. He's looking to and fro. And we looked at passages how God's moved by that, moves heaven. So he says this, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, uh, the, the, um, so that it will not destroy the fruits of the land, and the vine of the field will not fail to produce its fruit, says the Lord. And then all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Next verse, 13. Your words, your words against me have been harsh, says the Lord. You ask, what have we spoken against you? And you've said it's futile or futile to serve God. What do we gain by keeping his requirements and walking mournfully before the Lord of hosts? So, where do we gain the Lord, Lord of hosts? You see how you, they, the people are returning, oh, my help of heaven. What do we gain from the Lord of helps from heaven? So now we call the arrogant blessed. Not only do evil doers prosper, they even test God and they escape. You know what? The, what word they've come under? The word of self. This is the, they've come under the word of self. And then it says this in verse 16. At that, that, at that time, those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. Again, those who had 
come under the Lord. They spoke with one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a scroll of remembrance was written before him regarding those who feared the Lord. And it goes on to say that he'll redeem them, he'll restore them, he'll hold them back when there's destruction coming. That, 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 it's, it's amazing. Wow. Wow. Look, but let, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter, um, chapter 8. 11, and I know that I'm taking a little bit of time here. This is the word. Do we, do we, do we cherish, do we cherish coming and to see and to look at the word and go, wow, Lord, this is amazing. Look what you said. Look what you've prepared for us. Look what you, like, instead of going, okay, let's get my three points and let's get the heck out of here. No, no, let's, let's open the word and just, just go, Lord, show me more. Show me more how you've loved me. Show me more how I'm a child. We're gonna how I'm a child. How I'm your child, and you desire a, a, through Christ have blessed me, Lord. I want to return back to you all that you've blessed me. Deuteronomy eight eleven through eighteen. Be careful not to forget the Lord your God. He's talking to the children of children of God. Are you a child of God? Okay, yeah. these could in Christ you are. So you've been grafted in. So a lot of these things can kind of like correlate. Okay. Be careful not to forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commands and ordinances and statutes, which I give you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and you're satisfied, and again, I'm not talking about keeping the law. I'm talking about the, what I'm, the point I'm making here is remembering the Lord. Okay? And that, that transfers all the way through the good word. Okay? Both the old and the new. Okay? He says, don't forget. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses in which to dwell, and when you, your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery. He led you through the vast and terrifying wilderness with its venomous snakes and scorpions, a thirsty and waterless land. He brought you water from a rock. He fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know in order to humble you and test you so that in the end he might cause you to prosper. He said, don't forget how God made a way when there was no way. Don't forget how he's giving. Don't forget. Verse 17, you might say in your heart, the power and strength of my hands have made me this wealth. Well, you know, I put in a little more time than everybody else. You know, I was just smart and I, I invested there and I was just this and I was just that and I just did this and I just did that. This is what we can say. This is what we say when we don't, when we forget the Lord. This is what we say when we don't give him the honor that's due his name. But every time when I come to, come to, to, to be with him, I get an opportunity to declare where my help comes from. You know, I was, I remember I was a young man, about 23 years old. And uh, actually, it was in this, in this church on a Wednesday night. And uh, what was taught was about, and, and I can tell you this, that this has fallen off since online giving, um, for me personally. Um, I was taught that when I, I'm going to, I, I'm going to sow because I'm going to get something. Kind of like the same way, I was 23 years old, and they were talking about how, on a Wednesday night, they were talking about how, are you expecting to receive something or not? But I, I always, and I can't forget, maybe it was a guest minister, said, I never come to a place where I don't have something to sow. The same way I wouldn't come to a restaurant without having something to, because I'm coming and I'm expecting to, and so my expectation this is my expectation I could have received today. And I'm not talking about trying to buy things or manipulate. This is what we talked about on week one. So many times, heaven principles, ancient ways that have been set and are true. People would, would like to manipulate for self-gain and those kind of things. But I remember the anointing on that word and the truth of that, that, that I know that's right. It wasn't to get anything, and no one was telling me what to give. It was the Lord telling me what I was to give. And you'll sit there sometimes and you'll have that that was for this. And the Lord's like, I want you to give that. And this is what still happens. You, when you and I sit in a service, let's make sure that we, where, our, where we worship. The Bible says that we worship from here. We worship in spirit and in truth. Let's make sure we engage our spirit when we worship. When we're sitting here, when we come together, when we come to give the Lord glory and honor in, in the morning, instead of just, oh, we're going to pray for our three things, and our, let's make sure that we engage our spirit like, and ask the Lord, like, what are you saying? Who do you want me to pray for? Where do you want me to sow? How do you want me to sow today? 
Can I tell you, you might, your, your giving shouldn't look the same every week, week in, week out, week in, week out. And it's just like, that's just called AT&T, automatic withdrawal. That's called budgeting instead of worship. Can we, can we return to worship in our giving? Just worship. Like, I want to worship God. I want this place to be a house of worship. That when we come, we are very aware of Him, of our help. I, I believe God's calling us back to that, into a place of worship where we're drawing from Him, not just in this house, but when we're out on the road, when I'm on a job, when I'm in the supermarket, when I have a bad report. Oh, Father, what do you say? Oh, I worship you. And you know, when I worship, here's what worshiping looks like. It looks like bowing down. It looks like coming under that word. What do you say, Lord? How do you want me to give? How do you want me to serve? How do you want me to pray? How do you want me to sow? How do you, coming under that word, can you know, can I tell you this? Your and my lives are to be worship every day. You might say in your heart, verse 17, the power and strength of my hands have made this wealth for me. But remember that it is the Lord who gives you the power to gain wealth. I, I love putting this word in there. It gives you the breath, the strength. That power, that's what it means, uh, just the fact that you're alive, the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant, the blessing that he swore to your fathers even to this day. You know why? The blessing, the blessing. So I, I guess my, my prayer for this house and for this church and for, for me, for me, for us, is that we become keenly aware, the Lord's my help. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I would just declare I'm so blessed. And I'd understand that with that blessing, there's great purpose. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for every good gift in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Galatians 3, 8, and 9. Scripture foresaw that God would, just, would justify the Gentiles by faith and foretold the gospel to Abraham. All the nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So he's saying there's a blessing that's coming on the Gentiles through Abraham. Gen or Galatians 3, 8 and 9. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. He redeemed us, verse 14, uh, us in order that the blessings promised to Abraham would come to the Gentiles in Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. We've been blessed through Abraham. The blessing, the blessing that's on the children of Israel. Your lives are, you are empowered to prosper because of Christ. You're empowered to prosper. The world should see the blessing on your life. And you're blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Father, thank you. I'm blessed. All the nations of the earth are blessed. I'm blessed. That, that expanded a little bit bigger. Nations blessed. Nations blessed through me. Nations blessed through you. A whole school district blessed through you. you gotta, we got to increase the blessing based on its source. If you win the lottery and you win Powerball at this level, how many of you know you're not just thinking I'm going to buy 100 acres somewhere? You're thinking I'm paying off their house. I'm paying off their house. I'm getting them a brand new bulldozer. I'm getting them that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm buying this land over here. I'm building that church here. I'm building those churches over there. I'm doing this here. I'm paying off that debt. Why? Because you have a bigger source. It's time we get a bigger source. And we declare every time I sow, Lord, you are the one who gave me the strength. Thank you for giving me Christ. Thank you for the blessing through Christ. Thank you. How can I worship you today? How can I worship you today? How can I worship you? I want you to, I want you to lay your life down, your time down to lift up that couple. Oh, Father, I worship you. And I'll lift up that couple. 
Oh, I worship you, and I sow this way. I worship you. I'm talking, sowing is not just dollars. How can I worship you today? I want you to go encourage them. I don't know what to say. Don't worry, I'll fill your mouth as you go. This is the blessing. This is tapping a different source. we got to tap a different source. Not just these hands, not just this mind. We've got to tap the Spirit. A source where your help comes from. I'm going to send you a helper, the Spirit of God. Galatians 3.29, and if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We know that every good gift comes from the Lord. Romans 8, 5 through 11. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds. According to means to be come down from. Those who come down from the flesh. To come down from, who draw from the flesh. Romans chapter 8. 5 through 11, but those who live, who conduct their way of life according to or receive their directions from the flesh, from what they see, what they think, or with their own hand. He says this, according to the flesh, set their minds, set their minds means, this idea is difficult to translate, it's what I talked about earlier in English because it combines both the visceral and the cognitive aspects, the inside, the innermost parts of you, and the cognitive, so what you believe in your heart and what you think in your brain. They set their minds, they set, that those who live according to the flesh, they, they, they're taking their direction, flowing down from what they see. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds. They come under and say, what does the Spirit say? What happened? I'm, or what do you say? Well, can I tell you the Word of God? Coming under what the Word of God says? He says this, is the, minds that, uh, uh, the mind of the flesh is death. Death. You know what death is? End. Lack. No more. But the, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Can I tell you that's the truth? It doesn't make sense. The laws, the way that God works is not the way that we work. His ways are a whole lot higher than our ways. That's why we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, not conformed to the wor- world. It says this, because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are are controlled not by the flesh, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. He's talking about your and my bodies, this right here, experiencing life based on where we set our mind. Let me me read a couple of things that I, uh, in in my time of prayer, had written down. How How you think will determine what you think. How you think will determine what you think. According to the flesh? Will I draw from or draw down from? In order to draw down from, it's because I'm positioned under what I see, what I think, what I feel, what I've heard, what, I, what somebody else says. How I think will determine what I think. If I think this way, Lord, what do you say? How do you want to do this? I see the people... I mean, you see all these passages in the Word. You can see all these examples. How I don't do anything, Jesus said, except for what I hear or what I see my Father. He was looking. He was listening. How determined what? How you think determines what you think. Where the eye is selfish, darkness. Where the eye is generous, light. How you think determines what you think. And what you think determines what you do. What you think determines what you do. So it's important how you set your mind. Is it going to be set according to the flesh? Or is it going to be set according to the spirit? Because how you think determines what you think. And what you think determines what you do. 
Now, what you do produces some results. Can I tell you? Let's define sin real quick. What does sin mean? It means to miss the mark. Can I tell you that oftentimes we're missing the mark that pays death just simply because of the way that we think? It has nothing to do with anything other than how we're setting our minds. I I think of it like this. the, The game of the ping pong ball at the fair. You got all these little lily pad cups or cups, you know, and you throw that pad. You throw or the, that, that ping pong ball, rather. And, you know, you're trying to get it in the red cup, the blue cup, the yellow cup, just none of the white ones. And so you throw it, and it lands. And it lands in the white cup. But that's death. Like we don't, we make a decision so many times and we don't realize that they're actually missing the mark. They're missing the mark because I'm not making a decision based on what, Lord, what do you say about this? And we got to recognize that our decisions, that what they pay, they really do pay death or life. I set before you life and blessing, death and cursing. So I'm just talking about today, about how, how you and I are to worship the Lord. We're returning back the windows of heaven, that here on earth we worship the Lord. We worship the, hev- the Lord who sits on his throne. I'm just talking about how we approach the Lord, how we worship Him, just being and coming underneath His Word and in, in the Spirit of God. What is He saying? Look at this. Um, so how you think will determine what you think. What you think determines what you do. And what you do will draw from the source you are governed by. So what you do, what you do, when you come under that Word, now that's where you draw from. So it, 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 it's like this. When I made that decision, how I think determines what I think, what I think determines what I do, but what I what I do determines where I draw from. We're talking about drawing from the windows of heaven. You can't make a decision with self and expect to draw from him. It's that simple. We're talking about opening the windows of heaven, laying for yourself up treasures in heaven. This is what the Bible teaches. I mean, you see this and you go, wow. Okay, that's why I sometimes struggle to ask the Lord for certain things because I haven't been, you, been living under his word to begin with. And so your heart is, mm. but you, when you and I move ourselves back underneath, it's not a works thing, it's an alignment thing. When things are aligned, the door opens. The heavens are unlocked. The windows are open. He says, do this and the windows will be open." Is it a works thing? No, it's an order thing. And so let's have those things in order, check in with our heart. So only what I'm positioned under can I draw from and close with this. Our lives are directed by the words we receive. When we receive the wrong word, we miss the mark that God intended us to walk in. Ephesians 2.10, that he's prepared some good things for us to walk in. It comes by, you, this, is, this is, everything comes back. The very least of the thing, to these dollars, it comes back to where I find my strength, where I find my help, where do I look to? Where am I setting my mind according to? Where am I drawing from? Or what do you say here? Or Nate, what do you say here? And what do they say? And what do they say? And what do they, no, let's, let's draw from him and let's be keenly aware of where our help comes from and recognize we serve a Lord of hosts. We serve one who is, the heavens are real. The heavens, what God authors, he also provides for. So I look to the word. I look to the spirit and say, Lord, what do you say? And it's not some woo thing. It's a child. It's child thing. It's the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. It's something you as a kid, you know. You know in your heart what the Lord's saying. You know. You know. This is how he leads you on the inside. But what do you say? And this is the same way when you're out, maybe out going, and this is, it sounds so simple, but love speaks here. When you go Christmas shopping, not because you have to get somebody something, but because you just genuinely want to bless them and give. Because the work of love is generosity. You'll see the red pair of shoes and you'll see the blue pair of shoes. And you'll say, well, I think this, this, that, or the other thing, but I really think 
but I really think they would like this one. What made you think that? Just because of this or because of this? You put both together, and you made up in your mind, and you made a choice to purchase this one. Can I tell you that same voice that's leading you to give is the same voice, that love of God is the voice that, of, of Him directing your days? That's maybe a simple analogy or simple way that you can practice. When you practice giving, when you practice sowing, you're practicing hearing the voice of your Father. What do you say, Lord, here? And you know what? When sometimes you're going to hear, Whoo! you know that gun you were going to buy for you? I want you to sow that. Oh, that was, uh, I'm drawn from a source. And I'm making a declaration as I do that. Lord, you're where my help comes from. And I worship you, God. I worship you with this gift. As we come into this next week, we're going to be talking about the coming of the king. You may have heard it talked about as Advent. You know, there's, an, there's the coming as we come into Christmas. We're, we're preparing our hearts. We need to be preparing. What does it look like for the coming of a king? As you come, I know we did this Black Friday. I know we did all this stuff. But really, all that what we're, it just as a nation. But what, what does it look like for the people of God to be preparing for the coming of a king? What does it look like? When we give, what does it look like? Where do we give from? Where do we draw from? And where do we, do we release from? You know, this is important. This is why we're giving. We're not just giving to do something good to say, look, we did something good. But be, God's wanting to pour out and pour to and pour through, through you and through us this holiday season. Every day. But that's what we're going to be looking to this, this coming, coming weeks as we come into December. We're starting a new thing new series called The Coming of the King. Can we stand this morning? We're just going to ask the Lord to make us aware of the windows of heaven this morning. I don't want to just do it and I'll, I'll lead a prayer, but I want you to ask this. You know, sometimes um, I'm just being, try to communicate this. Sometimes when you, when a pastor or somebody on the stage says something to pray and you don't know what they're going to pray, you can pray it, but you don't really know what they're going to say, so you're kind of like, you say it, but you don't know that you're really engaged with it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? At least I, that's me, because my words matter to me. Like what I say and what I... And so I maybe explain together as a congregation, we're going to pray this way. So we're going to take a moment, and we're going to pray. And we're going to ask the Lord for some things. Instead of me just praying over you, we're going to pray together. And we're going to ask the Lord to make us keenly aware, or very, and I just, I don't know why, it just is so sharp, that word has been sticking in my heart, in my prayers, keen, just so sharp, just be able to pick it out amongst all the others, aware of our help, where it comes from, and, and, and what God's wanting to resource, and what God's wanting to do in this season, in you, in your families, and through, and through you. So we're going to pray that way, and I just want to take a couple minutes, it's 1152, if you... Uh, and uh, I want to just take a moment now as a congregation, and we're going to pray. And I'm going to pray, and I want you to pray out loud so your, your next-door neighbor can hear you. Ask the Lord to help you and, and ask him for help. Lord, I need help today. I need help. I need you to make me aware of where my help comes from. But let, it, let, it, let, this, let this place be filled up with voices asking from the Lord. Okay? Can we do that? Asking the Lord for help this morning. Father, thank you this morning. We magnify you and we worship you. And we just say thank you. We lift up our hands to you this morning. We lift up our eyes to you. Where our help comes from. Lord, we're asking this morning to make us more aware of, of where our help comes from. Let us see it. Let us know it. We're beyond shadow of a doubt. Father, thank you. We just declare you're our help. We declare we need help. Lord, we need your help. We need your help today. We need your help tomorrow. Father, we need your help. And we, we desire to draw from you. Desire to draw from you, not just for financial resources. But, but Father, we desire to draw from you the resources of heaven. The resources of heaven into this house. The resources of heaven into this people. The resources of heaven into this nation, into this community. The resources. Father, thank you for the gifts of your spirit. Thank you for the gifts of your spirit. And so today, we come under and we set our minds according to the spirit. What do you say? What do you say? And we just ask you, what do you say? What do you say about our family? What do you say about tomorrow? What do you say? What do you say? And we'll say what you say. 
will come under it. What you say. We're yours, Lord. We're your people. Love through us. Love through us. Help us to be generous like our Father. Help us to be generous with kindness and mercy. Help us to be generous with our words, with our eyes. Help us to be generous. To yield to to yield to you. I'm yours, Lord. We are yours, Lord. Order and direct and lead us, your children. We honor you this morning. We give you the high place. We worship you. You're so good. You're so faithful. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to close this morning um, in this way. If you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus as the Lord of your life, you or you came and you need to get your life right, I'm going to be up here after. Also, two things. Um, or if you need healing in your body. I want to, uh, we're going to have my, my wife and I and a couple other pastors up here be up here. We'd love to pray with you, agree. Uh, and see God, God move on your on your behalf. Uh, I don't think we do that enough. Um, sometimes you just get busy, but if that's the, on either of those things, if you want to give your life to the Lord, or you got to just rededicate your life, um, you don't know where you'd spend eternity if your life was required of you today. Please come down and meet me here. Uh, or if you need healing in your body, we'll pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says, and and, and they will lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you Sunday.